This truly is the day he has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, good it's good that you are in the house, in the house today. today. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise God. Today, I just want to give honor and glory to God. Amen. A couple of things I want to say to the body. And I know I've been running keep out of the sanctuary in the morning and asking for a quiet house. After Sunday school, if I hurt your feelings, forgive me. But the cry of my heart and the cry of God's heart. God's cry out right now. And forgive the tears. I can't. It's such a, it's so heavy until the tears, when I think about it, the tears begin to flow. I've been crying for months. Not understanding God. Why you got me in this position? Why I'm crying? And God showed me, he said, you know what? That's my heart right now. Of where my body and where my people are. Where my church is going. Or where my church is gone. So when you cry, it only shows how I feel. Because you remember, God is a spirit. And he needs someone in the earth realm to carry out what he can't do. And that's why he needs us as vessels. He says, so I'm using you as a vessel to cry out yeah, yeah. on the behalf of my people. God is tired of church becoming a social place, a social society, where we ain't satisfied unless a whole lot of stuff is going on. And no souls are being saved. He tired of church being a place, a rotation, but there is no church growth. See, we count church growth when we see a crowd. That's not church growth. That's just church rotation. And when we rotate from church to church, and we don't deal with the situation why I caused us to left that church, then we become people stuck. You can't go anywhere. You can't get grow spiritually. You're just stuck. And God, he said, it's time, time out for that. He said, he's looking for people. God wants to come in. See, church growth is about salvation. Souls being saved. And if salvation is not happening in our church, God said, what my son died for is in vain. He died for you, and he died for me, that we would have an opportunity to go live with our Father. And if that's not happening, what he did on the cross, what he died for, is in vain. And God says he's not satisfied with that. God says no more. And so that's why. On Sunday morning is when I say, if you're not on your face and you want to talk and have your conversation, please go in the back. Because see, the thing of it is you got to understand, it's the anointing that breaks yokes. If God doesn't show up, if the anointing doesn't happen, no yokes are broken. Salvation doesn't happen. Salvation doesn't happen just because you came in the building. <laughs> if the anointing doesn't get don't fill this place, no, nothing happens. Church becomes a social place. It becomes a place of entertainment. And God says no more. It grieves in the heart of God. And God says, 
says no more. Amen. Amen. So if you see me crying, we went to the movie. And rather than enjoy the movie, I'm crying. Not because of what's on the movie. I'm crying because all I can do is hear the heart, feel the heart of God. Pastor Drew, he didn't even understand what was going on with me. Why are you crying? And I'm like, Lord, you, this is my husband. He can't even see why I'm crying. But I'm crying because God says, and grieving. God heart is grieved. Because you gotta understand. And I'm gonna get to what God has given me for you all, but I have to tell you this, because I want you all to understand. Oh Sunday morning. Don't feel bad. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. But if I have to hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. But the sanctuary has got to be a place of prayer. That's right. It has to be a place where God's anointing rests. Yeah, yeah. Because God wants his people no longer to go out sick. Right. It's sad when people come to church and we come back and forth to church and People are not being healed. Mm -hmm. People are dying with cancer, but they come to the house of God and they can't get healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why. So if you see me desperate, right, right. and you see me saying, no, 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 and if you want to talk, go in the back. Because I want you, when you walk in Faith Fellowship Christian Center, you walk in this building, I want you to know yes. that you've been in God's presence. Amen. Amen. You no longer go out of broken people. Amen. You no longer go out the way you came, but you go out knowing yeah. Yeah. that I not only I experience God, That's my cry. Outside of that, we're wasting our time. And until the body of Christ get that, we're going we are just wasting your time. You might as well stay at home. You might as well go to the you might as well go to the club if you're not coming to the house of God for what it was created to be. When God seen what when Jesus walked the earth and he seen the things that went on in the church today, he he tore up the church. He tore it up. Because it pained him. That his house was no longer called a house of prayer. And that's where God's heart is right now. He said, no more. No more. I invite you in the sanctuary only if you're on your face. But if you call, come to talk about what you did last night and what's going on in your life, no. 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 Because God is a God to be feared. And he a God to rec of reverence. Yes. And if we want his presence, and we want his anointing, we got to get desperate. Yes. It's, time out playing. it's time out to be playing with the house of God. Yes. Yes. Our children are going to hell. Yes. And if you don't change your mindset, that's where you're on your way to. Yes. To a devil's hell. And I say it that way because hell is real. The scientists have discovered that there's a fire in the heavens that they 
can't even explain. So if you don't think hell is real, ask somebody. Because it's real. And the devil's in competition with God to get your soul there. And it started in the garden. And every time you come to church and you're not healed and salvation don't happen, it grieves the heart of God. Because you know what? There's a soul that the devil just still walking in, walking in the hands of the enemy. And God said, no. I want my, I want my children in my house. And the thing of it is, the word that the Lord showed me on last Sunday, and we make so many excuses for our sin. We who say that we're saved. And the Lord gave me this scripture on Sunday. And it's a scripture also to remind us of who we are. Mm. Y'all, let's just pray. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We come to you asking you, God, that love this word, Father God. Yes, Lord. That you are parted in me, Father God. Yes. That, Lord, you allow it to come forth. Yes. Allow it to hit our ears, God. Yes, Lord. Allow it to take root, God. Yes. That it will penetrate yes. and do the very thing that you called it to do, God. Yes, Lord. That God, that we can walk therein, God. Yes. And Lord, I just thank you. Yes, Lord. And I just give you glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now I got all that off my heart. Now, I can come with the word that God showed me on Sunday morning during Sunday school. And my husband always tells me, he said, you know what? God has put so much on in you. And he showed you so much. When are you going to share it? I said, okay, God, I'm going to walk in your obedience and do the thing that you called me to do. The book I want us to go to is the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. You all hear me? Okay. Chapter 4. Okay. And verse 17. And the reason why, one of the things I, like I told you so many times, we set up in church and we hear the word of God and, and we've heard the word of God and it's like, God, that's not what that scripture is talking about. And when God showed me this last Sunday, I said, Lord, that's not what that word is saying. And Sunday, Lord wanted me to tell you all to read this, this particular passage every day. And the reason why he told me, want me to tell you all to read it, it's a reminder yeah. of who you're not. Amen. And as you read this word, it's not to justify your sin. Mm. It's not to justify the errors of your way. See, this is the thing the Lord has shown me the scriptures that so many times when we hear the scripture, we use a justification when we fall. But it's a reminder of you to tell you to put off the old self and put on the new self. And once you have done that, so you have to remind yourself of who you are daily. You have to remind yourself every day that I'm a child of God. Amen. And so when you begin to want to touch those things that is not of God, this is the scripture. And this is, this is the purpose for reading the scripture every day. It had to start with me. I had to get up and go and say, no, I want you to start. When I got home on Sunday, I want you to start. So when you're in the workplace, 
and you attempt to do certain things, right. not to justify what you've done, but to remind yourself, that's, that's not who I am, so I can't do that any longer. Right. Right. Okay? Right. Right. Pastor Eric, please read this for me. Trying to get my thoughts together. Verse 17. So this I say, therefore, testifying the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Mm -hmm. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorant, ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feelings have given themselves over unto the shippishness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Next but you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm. Amen. Yes. Stop right there. And we're going to take this scripture piece by piece, because I really want you all to get this. So I tell you, and this is the thing that you remind yourself, that you're no longer a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm no longer a sinner. Amen. Lord, I'm no longer unrighteous, but I'm righteous. Yes. So when you get ready to, like he's told Gentiles, he said, when you get ready to fulfill the fruit, when you become, when you want to fulfill the lust, those things, when you get ready to steal something, mm -hmm. you have to tell yourself, no, 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 Lord, I can't steal. Because that's not who I am. Right, right. So when you get rid of the devil tempt you to steal, say, remind yourself, mm -hmm. I don't steal no longer. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the, look, the devil tempt us to steal stuff that it seems so innocent. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we don't realize when you steal stuff, you bring in deadly things into your household. Mm -hmm. So God can't bless you no longer. So be careful. Amen. And that's what he's telling you. Remind yourself when you get ready to lie. Mm -hmm. And tell a lie because the devil wants you to lie. <coughs> to remind yourself, no, I can't lie anymore because I'm not a liar. Because you know what? That's not who I am. Right, right. So I can't walk as a liar because I'm not a liar. So when the devil say lie, say, no, I can't lie because I'm not a liar anymore. It's not justifying you to tell you to lie. He said, don't lie. Right. So when you find yourself lying, pick up this word and say, you know what? Go back to Ephesians. Mm -hmm. 4 and 17, say, you know what? I'm not a That's no longer who I am. Right, right. So when you, get to, when, you get, when you get to a point in your life where you want to um, have, harden your heart towards the things of God, say, no, mm -mm. Getting sensitive to the things of God. Mm -hmm. Want to be want those things that gratify the flesh. Right. And there's so many things that bring gratifies the flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to listen to music mm -hmm. that has not, that gratifies the flesh, mm -hmm. say, oh no, 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 I can't listen to that. Right. Because that's not who I am. Amen. I'm no longer that person. Right. So it don't, it's not fitting to me. Right. So I can't listen to that anymore. Right. When you get ready to go to a place mm -hmm. that you know you're not supposed to be, mm -hmm. and you have to remind yourself, say, no, 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 I can't go there no more. When your friend's trying to lead you to the club or get you to dance to music or get you to do things right. that right. not who you are, say, no, that's not no longer me. So I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's why God wants you to read his word. See, the word is a, a lamp unto our feet. Right. 
it's the thing that for we to learn to get directions for. And that's why when we come to the house of God, we can't take the word of God for granted. When you come to the house of God, you need to come with your listening ears. I'm not just talking about these natural ears, but you need to put on spiritual ears. So that you can hear the word of God. So when you get ready to walk out those things in the earth realm that is not God's will for your life, mm -hmm. the word that, that's departed on the inside will let you know, no, God, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you begin to walk in the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. See, the devil wants us to make us feel like this is some big old thing that we got to walk out. No, 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 no. You have to remind this flesh because this flesh don't like, don't want anything. It don't, it don't even enjoy. It all it wants to be is be glory and, and, and want gratification. And do whatever feels good. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't show forth who God is, let it alone. Turn it loose. You, there are too many people sitting up in the house of God that's, cuss, that's cursing, right. lying, and swearing. <clears throat> and that's why when we go out to the world and we go to witness, the, the world say, you know, why I go to church? And we proclaiming the, 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 that we are saving, that we know God, and we're doing what they're doing. Yeah. No more. Mm -hmm. God saying no more is not acceptable. We serve a jealous God. We serve a God that is not going to share you. <clears throat> so if you think you can serve God and the enemy too, that's a lie. Yeah. If you think you can serve God and go everywhere and handle everything and do everything and think you can come back to God and think you're acceptable in his sight, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. You can't. God is tired of his people proclaiming his word and living like the devil. And we think that we can come to church and it's okay. No, it's not. If you are not serious, it's time to get serious about the things of God. It's time to put away these things. It's time to say no more. I'm not going to be a liar. I'm not going to be a curse. I'm not going to be a homemonger. Right, right. Because when you do these things, you're not of his. You're not acting like a child of God. Right. When the world hears you and he says, he, he, he didn't tell you don't get angry. You're going to get angry. You're going to get upset. But he says, sin not. Right. So when you get angry and you start cursing and, you, and, and what's coming out your mouth don't sound no better than you doing the same thing as the world is doing. You are not showing forth his glory. What you're doing, you're bringing God's name to a shame. You're shaming the name of God. And then you want to turn around and invite your friends to church? That's a hypocrite. And God said, no more. He said, no more. Either you love me or you hate me. He said, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and the enemy, too. He said, I'd rather you hot or cold. Amen. See, if you're cold, see, the devil, know, the, see, those who are cold, they know they're cold. They know where they're going. Those that are hot, he said, I, I want you hot or cold, because if you're hot, you're all in, you're all for me. But if you're lukewarm, you may be here today and you just all over the place. I can't depend on you. Because you don't know who you are and the world don't know who you are. And the devil don't know who side you're on. So he said, you know what? Because I don't, I don't like warm stuff, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And so when you walk around and you ain't full in the things of God and you ain't all out for God, yeah. he's telling you, he said, you know what, I'm going to spew you out of the mouth. I don't even want you in my face. Right. So when you out there and you think that you can come to the house of God and praise him after you done did the devil's do all Friday night and Saturday night and thank you, 
you accept it, it accept it right. by right. God, right. you're fooling yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing this word to you like this because you know what God is saying, no more. Right. Right. He's saying no more. Mm -hmm. God looking for a faithful people. Yeah. Yeah. God looking for people that he can get a word through in the earth realm. Right. See, yeah. God is a spirit. And just like he's a spirit, see, the thing about God, and this is what I want y'all to understand, I'm talking. See, the thing that we have to understand about God, God needs someone in the earth realm to carry out what he can't do. See, he's a spirit. Even God obeys the spiritual realm. He knows that, you know what, I'm a spirit. So I can't, I need a body. To carry it out. The devil knows that he needs a body to carry out in the earth realm. And so what you got to make up your mind to do is what side of my, I'm on. Right. Right. Because he ain't going to use you to carry out his will until you say yes. Until mm -hmm. so you say yes to my will, yes to my way. And first of all, you gotta say yes to salvation. Right, right, right. First, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta come to the realization that you know what. First, you gotta agree with God. Say who you are. God said you was born in sin and repent of that, and allow God to come in inside of you and take up residence right. in you and say now He'll say now you're a vessel that's worthy to be used. Right. And until you do that, you're not worthy. You're trying to live outside the will of God. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what the devil have told you or what you have heard. Right. Coming to church don't save you. Right. Right. Only thing coming to church do is set you up for a devil's hell. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't sincere mm -hmm. about the things of God, mm -hmm. you might as well stay at home. Because you can't serve both. That's right, that's right. You can't do both. And so God is saying, I need a people who are going to allow me to walk out my plan in the earth realm. Just like the devil, if you surrender your members to the devil, because he need a body too. Right. He needs somebody to carry it out. Right. So when you think that you can go out and handle the devil's, do the devil's doing, come to church, it don't work that way. Right. You live in a deception. That's right. You already been deceived. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, talk about I don't want to be deceived, I don't want the devil, I don't want to be deceived. Lord, take the blindness off my eyes. Lord, I don't want to be able to see you clearly. Because, you know, I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to get before God one day and he say, depart from me. Right. Yeah. I never knew you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And that's what we as the body of Christ got to make up in our minds and our hearts in today. To say, God, um, God, I don't want to be departed from you. I don't want to walk one day and think I'm on my way to heaven. And, and then when I get before you, God, you say, I don't know you. Right. Right. Because you're going to end up in a devil's hell. And we think that when we're walking, that we can set up in church and come to church and then go back out and do what we do the same stuff every. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. You got to begin to make a difference. Yeah. We got to show the world. You know what? There's a difference. That's right. You can't no longer live in sin. You can't no longer go and say that I'm a child of God and you're sleeping with Tom, Dick, and Harry. And then now you're saying that I'm a child of God? No, you cannot. Because what we don't understand is that when you sleep with Tom, Dick, and Harry, when you get up, Tom, Dick, and Harry still with you. You make a covenant with everybody that you sleep with. There's a blood that happens. You're making blood covenant. I'm talking to you young people. And that's why when you come to the house of God, when you come to the house of God, 
ask yourself why I'm here. When I get up on Sunday mornings to come to church, why am I here? I'm here because I grew up. And somebody told me I need to come to church every Sunday. Uh, this is what we do. Are you coming to church because you want to hear and do the will of God? Amen. And if that's not your reason for coming, I'm sorry, you're coming for the wrong reason. And you ought to understand God's heart is hurting right now. Because the way the body of Christ, we who say that we are children of God, the way we are acting, mm -hmm. the way we're walking out our lives. Because he can't get Anything in the earth room, he can't even save anybody because you're saying that you're saved and you can't get anybody in the house of God to get saved because they're looking at your life and they say, why go to church? If the world looking at you and you're not, and you're coming to church and that there's no change about you, why should I go? Right. <laughs> Why should I go to church every Sunday if, if you go in and, and you stand up in church and you're hearing the word and there's no change in your life, so what church is going to do for me? And that's why you have to make a conscious effort. And that's why God was telling me, tell my people every day, Make a conscious effort to read Ephesians 4 and 17. Not to justify it, but to remind yourself who you are. To look at his word and say, you know what, that's not who I am. I'm no longer to walk therein. Right. I'm no longer to walk that way. So when you feel like you can get up and do everything and touch everything and, and, and think that you're a child of God, no, you're not. There has to be a difference. And we have to commit to making a difference. And the only way that you can make that difference, you got to accept him in your life and it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. Because you can't do it on your own. You cannot live and walk this life on your own. I'm sorry, church, you can't do it. You can't do it. And your excuses, why you can't get to church on time, I'm talking from, I'm talking because this is the thing that God is saying no more to. These are the things that we do in the house of God that grieves his heart. These are the things that we're doing as we're saying and we're confessing that we're the children of God, that we're walking out and we're not doing what God says do, and we think it's okay. Right, right. And God says no more. Amen. You hurt in God's heart. When you said it loud, the pledges of this life, We so caught up in the pleasures of this life till we can't even commit to the things of God. And you wonder why you're desperate and you're broke and you're not ill. God said no more. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. We, can't, we can't commit to the things of God because we're so tied up. We're so tangled up in the things of this life. <coughs> Until when the time we commit to the things of God, we, we, we say, oh no God, I, got, I, I can't do that today because I'm, I'm going to go hang out over here. So Lord, I'm going to sacrifice your house because I need to go get entertained. I need some pleasure. 
And so what we're doing to the house of God, I'm talking off my cuff because I want y'all to really understand what's, what, what's angering God about the house of God and what's going on in the house of God. So what pastors has to go do in order to get you to come to church, they got to go back out to the world and get some pleasure. Because those are the things that you do. And then the house of God become a, 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 a lion's den. And no, no longer come a place where people can get saved at. It no longer comes a place, pulpits and, and altars right. are being, is you, is, I mean, um, baptism pools mm. are drying up. Yes. Altars. Mm. Pastors don't see no need to build altars in church no more because you know what? Nobody wants to pray. Mm. Nobody's praying. We don't even take prayer seriously. We don't even take preaching of the word seriously. And we think that we can enter, that we're going to heaven. With that mindset, no, you're not. You're on your way to a devil's hell and you deceived and don't even know it. Because you think you can handle God's things, half handle God's um, the things of God, and not be serious about the things of God, not dedicate your things, your, yourself to the things of God and think that you can walk around and do whatever you want to do in this earth realm. And think you're going to own your way to heaven. No, you're not. My warning to you all to church today is time to get it right. There's no time. It's time out for living a hypocritical life. If you ain't serious about the things of God, it's time to get serious about the things of God. Yeah. It's time to get serious, church. It is time. Amen. It's time to fall on your face. It's time to get on your face and your knees and begin to well out for the things of God. It's time for us to begin to take the things of God serious and no longer take, the, take for granted the things of God. I'm sorry, church, but it's time out. It's time out. We don't understand. We hurt in the heart of God. We're destroying people's lives. We're telling people, you know what? God can't keep you. And that's why salvation doesn't happen. church. I'm serious. It's time to get serious about the things of God. Rise for the cause. He's calling for a serious people. Serious. serious people. God is calling and he's Understood. looking for people who's going to dedicate and truly going to love him. Yeah. 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 Amen. God needs people to carry out his will in the earth realm. He's looking for some people to say, God, for, you, for God I live and for God I die. Right. He needs some bodies in the earth realm yes. to honor him, Jesus. to not dishonor him. He's looking for people to say, but I honor you, God. Yes. I love you, God. I want to give all my all to you, God. I'm no, I'm tired of giving my all to the enemy. But God, I want to give it all to you. Yes. Yes. So God, that souls can come into your house. Yes. People can get saved. Yes. Amen. I'm serious, y'all.
on God. He needs some prayer warriors. He needs some people that are saying, you know what, God? I want to be used of you. Lord, I want to be your vessel. I want to be able to bring someone that's in the kingdom. I don't want to just encourage someone from the kingdom. I want to em encourage someone to come to the kingdom. Yeah. I'm telling you, when you come to the house of God, change your mindset of why you're coming. Yeah. Because if you don't, some of you are going to find yourself in a desperate place. <coughs> and if you can't withstand the little stuff that you're going through right now, here's some stuff getting ready to hit the earth rim. Then if we as the body of Christ, if you don't get serious about the things of God right now, and you can't handle little temptations now, What's get ready to come on the earth rim? You are. It's gonna take you out. Mm -hmm. It's time. What I'm trying to tell you: It's time to stop playing with God. Mm -hmm. It's time to stop living a double standard life. God said no more. No more. God's calling people to a place of salvation. Either you're born again or you're not. Either you're a child of God or you're not. I can't butter it up. And the tears you see me crying is because that's how God is. God's heart is grieving. But what he sees that's going on in his house. He said no more. He said no more. He said no more. He said no more. Walking as the children of this world. It's time to come from out from among those. Yes. It's time to become a separated people. Yes. Yes. It's time to get serious about the things of God. It's time to put on the whole arm of God. Yeah. Jesus. It's time to stop living like the world because you're no longer of the world. He said, if you are separated, and you say, it's my children, you're my children. It's no longer, it's time to stop. Living like you don't know me. It's time to stop. Walking in a way that it dishonors God. 
to hear me, church. God has said it's no longer acceptable. What's going on in my children? What's going on in my house? God said no more. God is bringing judgment to the house of God. It is a cry. I'm telling you, you better get serious. It's time to stop playing with the things of God. I can't stop crying because God said my heart is grieved. And we don't understand he grieves his heart. God loves us so much. He don't want to see you go to hell. But God honors his word. And if you don't think God honors his word, he will hold himself to his word. And it's time for us as the body of Christ who proclaiming that we know him to stop living out as though we don't know him. Living life that's not pleasing in his sight. When we leave church, we leave church as though we haven't even heard his word. God said no more. Amen. It's time to walk in a way that the world knows that you are his. Oh my God. It's a cry, y'all. I'm telling you. I can't stop wailing. And that's how we're hurting the heart of God. So every time you begin to touch something and you say that you're a child of God, that dishonors God, remind yourself, no, that's not who I am. I don't want to dishonor my father. I don't want to disrespect my father. I don't want to hurt the heart of my father. Because when we do it, we hurt his heart. I don't know why I'm saying what I'm saying today, y'all. This is not what I prepared. The only thing God is telling me, stop hurting my heart. Stop hurting my heart. He's telling me, let you know that I love you. I care for you. But you're hurting my heart. You're grieving my heart. Because you're walking outside of who I call you to be. You was telling me that what my son died for is in vain. It was a waste of time for my son to die on the cross. He said, I sent my son that you may have life and have life more abundantly. I sent my son to give you opportunity. And God 
sin no more. It's time to get desperate, you all. It's time to get desperate for the things of God. And if you aren't desperate, you need to seek God and ask him, why not? It's time to get desperate. It's time to get desperate. It's time to stop walking as though you don't know God. It's time to stop. I'm telling you, God, it's a warning from God. It's a plea of his heart. about 
the things of God, nothing is going to happen. You walk out the way you came. You just come into a place. You just come into a building. And then you walk out and you wonder why you don't. Lord, there's no change. Make up your mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. I heard real clearly the cry and the burden that the Lord placed on Mr. George's heart for the body, for the church. It is decision-making time. It is time for us to truly identify ourselves. We say that we are truly the people of God. Mm -hmm. then it needs to be reflected. Our behavior, our thinking, everything about us right. need to reflect that we truly know God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to ask us all to stand here at this time. And while you're standing, many of you, if you haven't read it already, you've heard the story in the book of Exodus when Moses was on top of the mountain receiving the commandments, instruction from God to give to his people. And while Moses was up in the mountain for those 40 days, Aaron and the others, on behalf of the people, built a golden calf. And Aaron declared, this, this is the God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. But as long as Moses was in the mountaintop, he couldn't see what God saw. Right. And God told Moses, get down off the mountain for the people have sinned. Mm -hmm. Moses then went down to the valley. And when he got down there, then he could see what God saw. Mm -hmm. and this is what we need to pray today. God, open our eyes. Yes. So we can see what you see. Yes. Because when we see what God sees, mm -hmm. then we will react the way God acts. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. And I believe this is the cry and the burden of God's place on Mr. George's heart. You see, there's things happening in the house right now. Yes. It's one thing to be out in the world. We're going to be out there and just be on out there and be cold all the way. Mm -hmm. But it's time that we get on fire in the house. Amen. It's time out for the new Amen. Amen. And that's the cry of the heart. Yes. Is that fire be in the house, in the house. And the way in which we treat the house of God yes. and the things of God. Yes. Also, when Moses saw what God saw, mm -hmm. he then took those commandments and broke them. Mm -hmm. Those tablets of the stone and broke them. Mm -hmm. But then he also made a plea to the people and said, listen, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? And the Bible says out of those tribes, only one tribe moved close to Moses, and that was the tribe of Levi. And then judgment came down. Because the people were fornicating. The people were committing sin. They began to, to party and do all kinds of things in the presence of Almighty God, who just brought them out of bondage. Who delivered them with a mighty hand and brought them out of Egypt. And set them free. And now this is how they treat him. By yes. worshiping an idol. Yes. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. And this is what I believe the burden is right now. The Lord's side. Uh -huh. Just like Moses said to the children of Israel. Who's on the Lord's side? If you're on the Lord's side. And don't move. Just because I'm asking. Uh -huh. Just because I'm saying. And if you're not serious. Even as Minister George has ministered here. Don't even make your way up to this altar. Mm -hmm. Because it's time you. To identify with the people of God. Yeah. 
And if you're on the Lord's side, it doesn't matter who's looking at you, but it's time to make a decision. Yes. You come to this altar. If you're tired of that old lifestyle, and you're identifying with God, then you come to this altar. Amen? Amen. I, I hope you understand what I'm asking here. Because there should be some movement. Amen. If there's no movement, then, then perhaps you're not ready. And then, then we got some work to do in this house. Some big time work. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Because if you're on the Lord's side, you're saying that you're going to say no more to the world. And that you're going to walk before God in holiness in consecration sanctification you're going to walk before God with a heart that is torn and cut for him towards the sake of God do you understand what I'm saying here identify yourself the Bible says Moses the mighty man of God who saw the glory of God said Moses was more willing to suffer with the people of God and enjoy the pleasures of sin of this life just to see them. Is that you this morning? It's time to identify with God. And I mean, it's time to be so serious as the word went forth today. The Lord, my mind is made up. We used to sing that old song, I've decided. I have decided. Nobody decided for me. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Then the songwriter said, This world behind me. And guess what is before me now? The cross. The cross is before me. No turning back. Now that's the decision we got to make. No turning back. Don't none go with me. Yet I would follow. Even if I got to go by myself, I'm going by myself. Do y'all hear this? Yes. And this is for all of us in this house this morning. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. These are at the altar right now, Lord. They have declared, God, that they're on the Lord's side. They've declared right now, Lord, that they're on your side, God. They will not bow down to idols, Lord. They will not worship, Lord, idols anymore, God. They will not put anything or anyone ahead of you, Lord. Recognizing, God, it is you who saved us, Lord. It is you who brought us out of bondage, Lord. It is you who, Lord, made a way where no way could be made, oh God. You did these great things in our lives, Lord. How dare we, God, serve another God? How dare we serve another master, Lord? After you, God, have healed us, God. After you have saved us, Lord. After you, Lord, have delivered us. How dare we serve another God. Oh, Lord, our minds are made up right now, Lord Jesus. The world is behind us now, God. No turning back, God. No turning back, God. We were pressed from this day forward towards the cross, Lord. Towards the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Give us the strength that we need, God, to live this life. Forgive us, God, right now, Lord, if we have been living lives that are hypocritical, God. Saying one thing, doing another, God. Oh, God, forgive us, Lord. No more, God, no more, as the word went forth today, God. No more. Your heart, God, said no more. No more. No more. Oh, God, forgive us, Lord, if we have not brought honor to your name, God. Forgive us, God, if we brought shame, Lord, instead of honor to you, Lord. If we said stuff that, God, we know as people of God, we should not be saying. You told us, God, to take off lying, take off, Lord, the old man and put on the new man. For anyone that's in you, Lord, is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So, Lord, my prayer that those in this altar, God, Lord, they're on your side. They say they're on your side. Now, oh God, help us to live this life. When we leave this altar, God, reminding ourselves, God, as the word said already, that we're no longer thieves, God. We're no longer liars. We're no longer adulterers, God. We're no longer fornicators, Lord. We're not idolaters, God. We used to be those same, God. 
We are now saints of God. You brought us out of that darkness, Lord, into your light, Lord. Now help us to live as children of the light. But that's who we say we are, God. And your spirit, God, now dwells on the inside of us, Lord. And your spirit bears with us with our spirit that we're your children. We give you glory. We give you honor now. In the mighty name of Jesus and the church said amen. 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 amen.